I'd like to tell you a little bit about um, graphic design. And the thing about graphic design is that um, take, it, it finds Wi-Fi signals and it translates the data that's been moved through the air in the Wi-Fi signals to uh, sound. And um, today I'm gonna, um, I wanna, since I got it working on this little experimental board, I wanna then further into this um, real board. It's, this sounds like a lot of noise actually, but here. Uh, and actually, when I'm finished with it, I want to put it in the sea shell, because like right now you hear the ocean kind of, or whatever, but eventually you want to put it in here, and it should sound different. Yeah, anyway. Um, so... That's what that's one of the things I'll do today. Um, so I've, I've been interested in um, electronics, but I made this uh, iPod, basically, and it's um, sort of a reaction to iPods that uh, well the iPod and it that that it takes so much attention just to listen to music and it's just such a overkill sort of device. So this thing. Uh, you put music on an SD card and you put it in here and uh, plug it in and you turn it on and it plays. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's heavy, it's metal, it's heavy metal. And you can uh, you can only uh, stop and start. So you can also turn. Um, other thing I've been messing around with is, uh, I'm interested in toy, uh, 
musical instruments. And this is one I've been messing around with. And on this one I put a output so you can plug it into an amp. And I also put a um, I put a pitch control on the it, it actually changes the speed of the processor. I think it's a little bit crazy. And it sounds really weird. Um, So, let's see, it's got different beats and stuff, so that's like, but then you can clean it up, you can lower it. Also, I'm interested in a. I'm trying to learn how to make um, devices that just use this one chip. It's a two euro, three dollar chip, and uh, but you need to program it. So I have an Arduino, which is like this little Italian made uh, thingy, and if I I can plug this into the computer, and I can I can write code that programs this thing. And then that thing can actually be used to program this chip permanently with this thing, supposedly. Uh, I actually forgot what this thing is called. But this is a little module that this thing plugs. This, is a, this chip is actually called the ATtiny85. And um, so with all this with these two thingies in a computer, I can program this chip to do things like uh, the first thing I was going to do is make actually a, a this thing, but this make one of these like a uh, this is actually an MP3 player, but I want to make a wave player. Wave player, wave is a wave files are a bit better, and um, this is there's a lot of circuitry in this thing, and this actually is almost all you would need uh, to do this, but even better. So I'll experiment with that. Um, so you can see that I'm like also interested in hardware rather than just uh, working with um, and actually tools rather than just working with paper and, and web as a designer. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting that uh, sort of the process that's involved in working with these sort of things and how and how that relates to the process that's involved in graphic design. So for example, with this. I can sort of enter a project in any sort of way, like I can enter it um, just a fascination with like a certain chip, for example, a certain technology, and um, you know, in, through learning how to actually make it, technically, um, you know, concepts, different concepts arise. So arise. So like, for example, this thing, I built it. Uh, and then I realized that I probably built it because I was um, sort of always thinking about how annoying it was and how weird it was that you um, have to spend so much time with technology just trying to listen to music and it like shares with your friends what you're playing and it tries to sell you things and it publishes your songs list and 
we have to be connected to the internet, and it's like a huge screen and interface, and really I just want to listen to music, I mean, I just want to listen to music, um, sometimes. There's nothing wrong with all that social stuff, but, uh, I'm, I'm not terribly interested in it, so, uh, yeah, that's like one way to enter sort of a project. I could have started with the idea that, you know, I'm not inter- I, 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 uh, the idea that I'm, I want to react against um, this overload of, of attention that, that, let's say, listening to music takes now. And then I w could have arrived at the same uh, outcome, this little box. But, so I think, and, and, you know, messing around with building this, uh, or, or hacking this, this toy instrument um, you know, I guess it started as a technical pursuit, actually, like, I wonder if it's possible to make this thing sound differently, because it's a little silly how it is. But now, um, I think I'll make some music with that, and so in a way it's like being more in control of your own tools, and being able to customize everything how you want it, and not having to pay a company to do it for you, or to buy a new thing, or, um, just to have more control, I guess is the reason, and, uh, yeah. So I'll take you through some of my, uh, printed work, my graphic design work, I have it here in the archive. Um, the top drawer here is mostly things that I've done since, um, 2006, and so, uh, First thing is a series of um, architecture books that I did for USC School of Architecture, and um, basically I designed a system that could hold um, different kinds of um, contents. So, you know, architecture books from schools are generally a lot of different kinds of images. So, anything from built models. To uh, plans and 3D renderings, um, and then some text. So, uh, the challenge to make the work look like it uh, all belongs to the same um, book, I guess. And so that that concept was used in a series of three books, and. And the last book was uh, more colorful. This book uses um, some different kinds of paper, some glossy papers and some matte papers. It became much more simple in the end, just experimenting, experimenting more with different papers and keeping the typography and the grid super simple. Um, another project that I did this year, actually, is um, this booklet for the uh, Haka'u is a design school, it's an art academy in Utrecht, in the Netherlands, and um, I designed, I actually curated and designed their um, end, ex end ex exhibition for the graphic design department. So um, I wrote uh, an essay and um, they talked a little bit about how the exhibition itself was um, kind of proof that the boundaries of graphic design are expanding. Because in the, in the student exhibition there was a lot of, um, a lot of work that dealt with um, not just graphic design, not just printed things, but like um, also yeah, there was like a lot of installation and video and some software projects. So. I, I wanted to sort of put that in some kind of a context. And I, I, I um, this, this, uh, ex this booklet is just, is printed, uh, on leftover paper. It's, uh, A4 paper and half. And I'm, I'm part of a group that owns a risograph machine together, so this is, uh, printed on a risograph. 
You can see this is the green, all green. And this one's like the purple, like an eggplant kind of color. This is a map of the gallery. So these are different student projects. And those are all the student names. Um, this is a project I did for also this USC School of Architecture. And basically it's a newsletter and I, I printed it on newsprint paper. And just kind of wanted to experiment a little bit with like the format actually. So it folds. From here, you mail it this way, and then it folds um, to here, and then this is actually the cover slash um, introduction essay. And then this is like the table of contents is here. In a way, this shows all the different spreads and what's on them. And in the beginning here, you have... Um, You have here a bunch of questions. These are interview questions that were actually asked to different people. So here I established that um, these are the questions, and then I don't have to repeat them throughout the rest of the, the book. So interview, and then this is just the answers to the questions, but not the uh, questions themselves. One good thing about this is that I wanted to. I was interested in seeing what like. A sort of centerfold spread. Centerfold would look like, but in typographic terms, not an image way. So here you have sort of like a typical centerfold image, but then this actually folds out again into a giant um, uh, typographic centerfold in a way. And this is actually like a piece of paper that's um, stapled just at the top of a big piece of paper and then folded. So it kind of becomes part of this booklet. This is just a two-color book. Um, this is a little a little booklet that I designed. That um, actually Henry Lucas and I designed this, and it's for the Department of Art in uh, at UCLA. And basically, they had 14 artists, and they needed to make a catalog with very little money. So we we just made um, spreads of each artist on one piece of paper. So there's 14 pieces of paper that are blank on one side and um, have one, and one artist's work on the other side. And we just collated the books. We made 14 different books and each one has a different artist on the cover. But then you end up with sort of kind of a little booklet with some blank pages. But that has all the artists but you can also make a custom book so that each artist also has their own cover. And this took a lot of collating, but it was, uh, in the end, kind of nice. So it's just loose pieces of paper folded, then with this little band on the cover. Um, it's a book, we actually did a very long, this is in 2006, but basically we designed a book for, again, uh, the UCLA Fine Arts Department. And there's a lot of essays and images. Again, they didn't have much money, but what we did is made, we actually designed a huge poster that had um, all of the images. Basically, this whole book is, is a cut-down poster. So we designed a huge poster, and, uh, and you can see actually the title and the poster is made up of these letter forms that you can sort of faintly see inside the book in some places. Um, there's like an, an O maybe, an H, an F, I don't know. But this thing was a huge poster and then we cut it down and then those cut cuts from the poster become the, the spreads of the book. And then we made a special edition that had like had the hardcover and it's properly bound. The rest were just um, more like a zine like this. And This was a book that I designed with Yasmin Khan. This was for the Otis Fine Arts um, exhibition. And it's just pieces of paper. I think it's from a color photocopier. And they're single side copies. 
um, fold, uh, folded and then bound with like this crazy hot glue on one edge. And it does become a nice book actually. So. Anyway. And then. This is, um. It's a project for uh, an organization in LA that, um. Supports uh, students moving from two year art, art, uh, art education to a four year acad uh, academy sort of situation. Um, so, again, it's like this it's a little booklet. Some fluorescent colors. But also, this, what we did is uh, it's actually folded from, oh, I guess that's a poster here. And there's a slot and then a slit in the middle where you can uh, I'm not sure how it's, uh, oh yeah, kind of fold up into a book. Um, this is a packaging for Pesquel Sisto as a video artist, and actually. The cover of the package itself is the certificate of authenticity, which I think is all DVD or video art needs. So, and then the, the title and everything and the artist's name are actually on the DVD, and you can see it through the package. So, it's kind of like trying to do more things with less, I guess. This is work I did before I went to art school. Here's my first fanzine. It's called Boredom. <laughs> um, Dude, this literally did fucking work, and now it doesn't work. That's good. Thank <laughs> you. 